Andrew Zimmern may have trotted the globe in his quest to try the world's most exotic foods, but his personal life wasn't always so glamorous. From being unhoused to struggling with his mental health, the celebrity chef has endured plenty of hardships. Andrew Zimmern was born in the Upper East Side of Manhattan. What sounds like a prosperous beginning was complicated due to Zimmern's less-than-traditional family life. His parents were best friends who married and had a child, despite Zimmern's mother being aware of her husband's homosexuality. When Zimmern was about five years old, his father decided to live as an openly gay man. Zimmern's parents subsequently divorced. When speaking to the Hilarious World of Depression podcast, Zimmern recalled that he began suffering from mental health issues around the age of five. As a result, he started behaving in a compulsive, risk-taking manner that foreshadowed what was to come. He liked shoplifting, for instance. These compulsions also involved drinking. In an interview with the Back From Broken podcast, Zimmern talks about sipping his dad's scotch and soda, though he believes that it was more about the naughtiness of the act than the alcohol itself. Zimmern admitted, I was addicted to the sneakiness and the lying before I was addicted to how the booze made me feel. After Zimmern's parents split, he lived with his mother and saw his father on the weekends, until a tragic accident changed everything. In the summer of 1974, Zimmern, then 13, came home from sleepaway camp to learn his mother was in a coma. Because the wrong anesthesia was administered, her oxygen flow failed and she sustained serious brain damage. When she came out of the months-long coma, Zimmern saw the full extent to which her state of mind had been altered. As he revealed on the Back From Broken podcast, she spent years in hospitals, mental health clinics trying to get right, instead of dying, where there could be an opportunity to complete a grieving process. The mother that I knew the first 13 years of my life, she was gone and she was replaced by someone else. As a child in the 1960s, Zimmern flirted with alcohol in grade school and says he first got drunk at around the tender age of 10. By the onset of his teens and in the wake of his mother's medical tragedy, Zimmern was often left unsupervised at home. In an attempt to quell his confusing feelings of anxiety and sadness, he began to dial up his drinking and drug use. I was a drug addict and alcoholic since I was 13 years old. At 13, Zimmern used the family credit at the liquor store to keep himself stocked with alcohol and even dipped into his mother's emergency cash fund to buy drugs. By 15, he was smoking marijuana and snorting cocaine before school. Zimmern eventually began dealing drugs and relying on a daily cocktail of marijuana, cocaine, alcohol, and pills. He was able to maintain good grades, but before he had even graduated high school, he'd experimented with heroin. In college, he studied history and art history, but often took semesters off due to his intensifying addictions. When he wasn't in school, Zimmern traveled abroad to study cooking, learning from chefs in Italy, France, and Hong Kong. Even in the mire of substance abuse, Zimmern was able to express his passion for food. When he was young, Zimmern often accompanied his father, an advertising executive, on international business trips. When they weren't continent hopping and digging into exotic fare, his father kept company with a prestigious circle of foodies that included the renowned chef James Beard. In his youth, Zimmern frequented Sunday brunches at Beard's home. Although Zimmern's father was pivotal in inspiring the youngster's cultural curiosity surrounding food, their relationship had its difficult points. When Zimmern's mother fell into a coma, his father didn't take him in. Instead, the 13-year-old lived alone in his mother's apartment. Zimmern summed up the complicated scenario on the Back From Broken podcast, saying, My father continues to this day to be my hero. I have him on a pedestal. It took me 25 years into sobriety to get to the point where I could admit that, that day when my father dropped me off at the apartment that he abandoned me. Through the ups and downs of Zimmern's young life, one constant was his infatuation with food. He grew up cooking with his mother and grandmother and spent summers working his first job at a seafood restaurant on Long Island. After graduating from Vassar College in 1984, Zimmern plunged into the New York City fine dining scene. He rose to prominence as a chef before becoming a restaurateur and partner in a food service development and consulting group. All the while, he dealt with severe drug and alcohol addiction, to the point where Zimmern admits that he doesn't remember most of the 1980s. It crashed and cratered me. By the early 1990s, Zimmern could no longer hide his addictions, yet he wasn't ready to quit. He was evicted from successive apartments, while his relationships with friends and family hung by a thread. Then, one of Zimmern's consulting clients found Zimmern passed out on the floor. His partners fired him. Zimmern went to a bar and encountered a group of squatters, whom he followed back to the abandoned building in Lower Manhattan where they lived. Zimmern spent about a year there. At the squatter's den, Zimmern slept on a pile of dirty clothes on the floor. He shoplifted cleaner from a bodega and sprinkled it around where he slept to ward off rats and cockroaches. Looking back on this desperate time in his life, Zimmern said on the Back From Broken podcast, I just can't imagine doing that today. It's beyond my comprehension. 
action, and yet I did it. And the reason that I did was that I believed with every ounce of my being, I did not have a choice. There was no choice. I had to do it. Plagued by defeat and overcome with shame, Zimmern's breaking point came in early 1992, when he stole jewelry from his godmother and sold it for $200. With the money, he booked a room at a flop house, bought two cases of vodka, took them to his room, and ripped the phone jack out of the wall. Zimmern drank almost continuously for about four days, until an unexpected moment of clarity came over him, which he revisited on the Let's Talk Addiction and Recovery podcast. He said, For the first time since I was seven or eight years old, I didn't have that ace bandage of pressure around my chest. And for whatever reason, I did something that I had never done before in my whole life, which was ask another human being for help. He plugged the phone back in and called his friend Clark, who brought Zimmern to his home to bathe and sober up. While Clark was at work, Zimmern drank all the alcohol in the home and stole his friend's change to buy more. What Zimmern didn't know was that Clark had already helped plan his intervention in rehab. In 1992, Zimmern touched down in Minnesota at Hazelden, a respected rehab center in the Twin Cities. Zimmern worked through his 12-step recovery program and after five weeks in treatment, transitioned into a halfway house where he was expected to get a day job. He started working as a dishwasher at Dubin's Cafe in St. Paul and to this day considers it the best job he's ever had, as he told Tasting Table. His next gig was as a busboy at Cafe Undu Toi. By the time he moved out of the halfway house, Zimmern was the restaurant's executive chef. He held the position until 1998 when he left his post to seek new opportunities. And just started building, building, building. When his ventures didn't materialize the way he'd hoped, a sober and ambitious Zimmern set his sights on food media. He started local, with food reviews and short-form TV segments. Eventually, his pitch for Bizarre Foods was picked up by Travel Channel. The show would become one of the most lucrative for the network and rocket Zimmern to celebrity status. Bizarre Foods brought Zimmern continued success, at least until a controversial 2018 interview with Fast Company caused a blip on what had been a smooth path for the popular TV host. The interview, which took place at the 2018 Minnesota State Fair, seemed lighthearted enough, but when talk turned to Zimmern's latest project, a soon-to-open Chinese restaurant called Lucky Cricket, the conversation got awkward fast. In an attempt to vividly illustrate his goal of opening 200 Lucky Cricket establishments in middle America, Zimmern described himself as an entrepreneur with a soul who wanted to make the world a better place. Okay, fair. But then he capped that sentiment off by saying, I think I'm saving the souls of all the people from having to dine at these horse restaurants masquerading as Chinese food that are in the Midwest. The backlash was almost instantaneous. Zimmern took to Facebook to address his blunder and apologize to the Chinese American community. Filming halted mid-season on Bizarre Foods, and on another show of his that was being produced at the time, The Zimmern List. The ultimate cancellation of Bizarre Foods put an end to Zimmern's 12-year Bizarre Foods legacy that spanned 199 episodes. Whether Zimmern's controversial comments were the cause of his restaurant woes is hard to say. Lucky Cricket opened in St. Louis Park, Minnesota in November 2018, but food journalists can be extra critical of celebrity-owned restaurants, and in light of Zimmern's controversial Fast Company interview, skepticism was unavoidable. I should have been much more judicious in my course of in my uh, choice of words. Reviews ranged from positive to questionable to cutting. The kitschy decor and inconsistencies in food quality were common callouts. By July 2019, the restaurant closed its doors. Despite only being open for eight months, Lucky Cricket claimed the closure was due to renovations. Nearly two months later, the restaurant reopened with a rebooted menu that included Vietnamese and Korean-inspired dishes. Lucky Cricket closed a second time during the COVID-19 pandemic and never reopened. In the years that Zimmern was filming Bizarre Foods, he visited over 170 countries and traveled 250 days out of the year. When he wasn't on location for Bizarre Foods, Zimmern's schedule was full of public appearances and other events, leading to a popularity and time away that was difficult for his family. To make matters more complicated, Zimmern has been open about developmental challenges faced by his son Noah, who was born in 2005. In 2014, Zimmern told Minneapolis St. Paul Magazine, two and a half years ago, our family was crisis. He then thanked the Washburn Center for Children in Minneapolis for implementing a treatment plan that involved the whole family. Yet the demands of his job persisted. Amidst the mounting pressures of his fame and reputation, Zimmern felt he had no choice but to fulfill the many obligations that came with celebrity. He addressed the difficulty in an interview with MinPost, saying this about his family. They are victims of my popularity. I'm sure more days than not, they would say it's not worth it. But I have this business to support. 
Zimmern met his wife, Rashia Haas, at a cooking school in 1999, where he was teaching and she worked in the shop. When they married in 2002, Zimmern had years of sobriety under his belt, but wasn't famous yet. Although Zimmern often commented in the press about how his demanding job didn't make family life easy, what the public didn't know at the time was that it was also wearing his marriage down. In 2018, around the time Zimmern was preparing to open his restaurant Lucky Cricket, he was also in the midst of a separation from his wife. By March 2020, the divorce had been finalized. Though his marriage dissolved and his demanding schedule shows no signs of letting up, Zimmern has found peace in these challenges. He is a devoted father, telling the New York Times, I want to be the best dad and the best ex I can be. If you or anyone you know needs help with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.